Hello, my name is Kathy, and today I'll be discussing how to use homeopathic remedies on ailments, continuing with childbirth and postnatal problems, P6 and R. But before I do this, I wanted to let you know that because I have a great many videos now on many different topics that I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easier to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Please refer to my How to Use Homeopathic Remedies video before using the material in this video. I'll be discussing how to use homeopathic remedies on specific ailments, but I've broken these ailments into categories for easier reference. I'll begin with ailments of the mind and emotions, then I'll move on to ailments of the brain and nervous system. Then I'll address issues with the skin, nails, hair, eyes, ears, nose, teeth, gums, lungs, respiration, heart, blood, circulation, muscles, bones, joints, esophagus, duodenum, stomach, uh, small and large intestines, liver, gallbladder, pancreas, kidney, and bladder. Then ailments specific to women and specific to men. Then issues of the hormones and the metabolism. Then address issues of homeopathic remedies on infections, infestations, and the immune system. Issues surrounding fertility, pregnancy, childbirth, postnatal problems, um, special problems in infants, ailments and diseases in childhood, and special issues of elderly ad adolescents, and finally special issues of the elderly. Constitutional treatment involves treating the totality of the individual person. Everyone is a unique individual with a unique physiology that responds to substances differently. In homeopathy, it's recognized that people will react strongly to certain remedies, and as a result of this, they can be loosely placed into different categories called constitutional types. Homeopaths talk of, for example, phosphoric types. These are people who react strongly to phosphorus, or arsenicum album types, those who react strongly to arsenicum album. The belief is that people of one type share similarities in terms of body shape, character, and personality, and the sorts of diseases from which they suffer. As an example, nature mere people tend to be pear-shaped, have a dark complexion, be fastidious and rigid in personality, and keep themselves to themselves. They also crave salt and suffer from constipation. As another example, lycopodium types tend to be tall, gangly, and of a stooped appearance, with an anxious expression and a craving for sweets and a propensity to produce intestinal gas. Now, of course, constitutional types have their limitations. In reality, each person is an individual, and so there are as many constitutional types as there are human beings. An account must be taken of the sum total of the person's inherent predispositions, past illnesses, diet, general reactions to the environment, intellectual and emotional features, and general attitude towards life. This is what is meant by constitutional treatment. I'll be making detailed videos of the various constitutional types after I've completed the use of homeopathic remedies on ailments. The ideas, procedures, and suggestions in this video and all my homeopathic videos are not intended as a substitute for the medical advice of a trained health professional. Consult your physician before adopting the suggestions in this video. If you're pregnant, do not attempt these techniques without the approval of your physician. So, let us continue learning how homeopathic treatments can help with childbirth and postnatal problems. P6 and R. If complications are expected, it is best to have the baby in the hospital, but if this is not the case, a more natural birth method is preferred. If you have strong views on specific procedures or specific drugs, speak to your doctor about this at some point during the prenatal period. This is also the time to ask if there would be any objection to your using homeopathic remedies, as they will not interfere with any drugs that you may be given. First stage of labor. In the last week or so of pregnancy, the baby's head slides down into the pelvis, and this will in turn relieve the pressure on the diaphragm and stomach, but it will increase the pressure on the bladder and rectum, and the whole vulval area becomes moister. Most expected mothers will probably have felt twinges of pain in the past few weeks of pregnancy, but as labor approaches, these will become more insistent, more frequent, and more regular. The expectant mother may also feel trembly and chilly. Now is the time to telephone your doctor or the hospital. A sure sign that labor has started is the show, which is a discharge of blood and fluid as the protective plug of tissue in the cervix is shed. 
At the same time, or shortly after, the membranes around the baby may rupture, resulting in a trickle or sudden flood of fluid called the waters. As labor proceeds, the expectant mother's pulse will become harder and faster, and her mouth may feel dry. Restlessness, nausea, and sometimes vomiting are also quite common features of this first stage of labor, especially at the transition where things may come to a halt before the second stage of labor begins. During the first stage of labor, the cervix or neck of the uterus opens and is pulled upwards so that the uterus, cervix, and vagina form a single tube or birth canal. Once in the hospital, or when the midwife arrives, the expectant mother will be given a vaginal examination to assess how close she is to giving birth, and possibly an enema is given to empty her bowels. The old-fashioned habit of shaving the pubic hair is not necessary to prevent infection. This first stage of labor usually lasts about 12 hours in a first pregnancy and 6 hours in a second, but there are no hard and fast rules. Sometimes the first labor stage takes up to 24 hours or even longer. Sometimes the first stage of labor only lasts a few minutes. Second stage of labor. The second stage of labor usually lasts an hour or so in first pregnancy and about half an hour the second or third time around. The contractions become stronger and the expectant mother feels the urge to push. It is time now for the expectant mother to push with the contractions and rest between them. It is common for the expectant mother to feel like her bowels are going to open. This is because the baby's head is pushing against her rectum. It is important for her to not let this stop her from pushing. As the head comes down the birth canal and is ready to escape from the pelvis, the expectant mother needs to go into panting respiration. The midwife, doctor, or other helper will control the head so that it slips through the vagina without stretching it too much or causing splitting. If there is a fear that the vagina will be badly torn, she may need an episiotomy, which is an incision in the skin of the vagina under local anesthetic. However, with good control and gentle massage of the vaginal, vaginal skin, an episiotomy is often not necessary. Though in some cases it is the advantage of mother and baby, this is something you should discuss with the midwife or doctor beforehand. Once the head emerges, the shoulder and body will soon follow. The baby can then be delivered onto the new mother's abdomen. Breathing is started by clearing the baby's airways of mucus and tipping its head down. The cord need not be clamped and cut until it is stopped pulsating unless it is around the baby's neck. Third stage of labor. This takes another 30 minutes or so and is marked by an increase in bleeding as the placenta or afterbirth is delivered. The midwife or doctor usually pulls gently on the cord while pushing gently on the womb. The new mother may be given an injection of piocin, which is derived from the same source as the homeopathic remedy Sicoli, to make the womb contract and prevent excessive bleeding. This is a good time for the new mother to bond with the baby, have a quiet cuddle, and offer the breast. Baby check. Immediately after birth, the midwife or doctor will check to see that the baby is all right, although a more thorough check will be done later. The baby's facial features will be checked for Down syndrome, genitals inspected for doubtful sex, fingers and toes counted, and the back will be checked for signs of spina bifida, which is indicated by hairy patches or missing skin at the base of the spine, and the navel for signs of diaphragmatic hernia. The anus will be examined to make sure that it is open, a finger will be put in the baby's mouth to check for cleft palate, and the hips and feet will be checked for congenital dislocation or club foot. Afterbirth. Once the baby has been settled, the new mother will be washed or asked to take a shower, bathing her vaginal area with arnica solution. 10 drops of mother tincture to a half a pint of warm water. will take away some of the soreness and promote healing. After that, the new mother should be allowed to sleep, or at least be very quiet and tranquil. At this time, well-meaning visitors and telephone calls can be very exhausting. The new mother will probably not feel very hungry for a day or two. Thin vegetable soup is good on the first day, with salads and fruit on the second, and a return to the normal diet on the third. Tea, coffee, chamomile tea, and wine are best avoided. The most important nutrients of the week after birth are iron to make up for lost blood and protein and to aid in healing and calcium 
if the new mother is breastfeeding. A mixture of blood, fluid, and mucus are discharged from the womb in the days immediately following delivery. After pains are common at this time and tend to be worse if labor has been relatively easy. It is quite normal for the new mother to feel very weary and stiff. Some women also find themselves perspiring a lot. Within 12 to 15 days, the womb returns to its normal size. After an episiotomy or a tear, the vulva and vagina will take several weeks to heal. Periods usually restart six to eight weeks after delivery, but may not reappear for several months if the new mother is breastfeeding. Peruperal fever. Peruperal fever is caused by infection of the genital tract shortly after birth, although any fever within two weeks of childbirth is dangerous since it can cause infertility or septicemia. Purpureal fever is rare thanks to improved hygiene during deliver, delivery and, of course, antibiotics. However, if you begin to run a fever, see a doctor within 12 hours and take one of the remedies that follow. Specific remedies to be taken every hour for up to 10 doses. Sudden rise in temperature, skin hot and dry, pain in the uterus, vivid thoughts about dying. Use Aconite 30C. Sudden onset of fever, face hot and red, eyes staring, delirium, distended abdomen, great thirst, bowels feel as if they are being clutched by a giant hand. Use Belladonna 30C. Profuse sweating, great sensitivity to heat and cold, offensive smelly discharge from vagina, increase in saliva, mucus or blood in stools, symptoms worth at night, use Mercurius 30C. Vagina discharge suddenly stops, constipation, nausea and vomiting, irritability, use Nux 30C. Wound feels very sore, slightest movement or aggravates soreness, irritability, feeling very apprehensive and pessimistic about the future, use Bryonia 30C. Retained Placenta Normally the placenta is shed within half an hour of birth or sooner if the drug pitocin is given. If retained for more than an hour, it may have to be removed by hand under general anesthetic. The homeopathic remedies that follow aid contractions of the womb and expulsion of the placenta. Specific remedies to be given every five minutes for up to 10 doses. Intermittent bleeding, retention of urine, lower abdomen, hot, red, sore, and painful to the touch, especially if the woman is of a mild, tearful disposition. Use Pulsatilla 30C. Bearing down sensation continues, pain strong and continuous, but ineffectual muscle of uterus, no longer able to contract. Woman throws bed clothes off and, and craves fresh air. Use Sakali 30C. Vagin, vagina feels hot and dry and hot, profuse bleeding, woman is red in face, moaning, very distressed, and sensitive to slightest jarring. Use Belladonna 30C. Vulva and vagina, extremely sensitive, severe cramping pains in abdomen, constant oozing of dark blood. Use Platinum 30C. I have a great many videos now on many different topics, so I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easier to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Well, that's it for now. To stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button right below this video. Take care.